Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be discussing some new product launches. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I wanted to do it because I have some thoughts. Also, a lot of the Valentine's Day stuff is launched, so I kind of want to discuss that. Among other things, I just feel like there's a lot going on in the beauty world right now, and we should catch up. So these videos are always super long, so I'm just gonna get into it. I will scooch over this way. Yeah, I think it's this side that I usually sit on. So I just want to get like right into it. I don't have much to talk about. Super Bowl happened yesterday. I don't know, I feel like my intros are always much longer. So I'm like in my mind trying to find things to talk about, but I've got nothing. So let's just get started. Also, if I'm a little sniffly, please excuse that. I just, I don't know what's going on. Um, probably some sort of allergies, but yeah. Okay, so the first thing I want... I don't know why, but my camera keeps going in and out of focus. It did that on my last video too. Not sure why. Hopefully that doesn't happen too much in this video. I'll have to figure out what's going on if it happens again. So the first collection I wanna talk about is the Natasha Denona Love 2 collection. This is for Valentine's Day and I really like it. I really like mini palettes and I just feel like Natasha Denona formula I really enjoy. And I really like the color story on this one. Um, I'm more interested in in the mini palette than I am the cheek product. That kind of looks like a cream blush. I don't know, I'm just not into like cheek products the same way I'm into eyeshadows, so I would definitely be interested in that palette. I really like the color story of the original Love palette that launched last year. I'm a really big fan of it, so having it in the mini size is kind of fun, but I really like the purple that's in the original Love palette, like the purpley tones, and I feel like this mini palette is kind of missing that. I don't know if I'll purchase it, but it's definitely intriguing. I do like it. Next up, is a collection by ColourPop. We have a couple of ColourPop launches to talk about, of course, as always. The first one is the Wild Child palette. I get where they're going with this, but I just think it's a miss for me. Watch, because I said it's a miss, it's gonna arrive in the mail like tomorrow. Every time I do one of these videos and I talk about a ColourPop launch that I'm like not super excited about, I get it in the mail and I end up testing it. So I don't know, I guess we'll see. Uh, I just, I don't know. I think the Super Shocks are really beautiful. The blushes are a bit of a miss for me. The lippies would be really dark on me, I know that. Um, but I get the idea that they were going for. I think they were trying to cater more to darker influencers, darker skinned influencers, sorry, because they are heavily criticized um, for not being very inclusive in that way. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it wasn't marketed towards people that look like me, which is fine. So maybe that's why I'm not super intrigued by this collection. I don't know. Let me know down below if you're interested in this one and what you think of it. I'll be honest. I just, I don't really know how to feel. Next up is a foundation launch. I feel like there have been quite a few foundation launches lately. This is by Huda Beauty and it is the Faux Filter Luminous Matte Foundation. I think this is an updated formula to their original faux filter foundation. I know that this new one is fragrance free and that's a criticism that a lot of people have had with the original foundation is that it was just too heavily fragranced. A lot of people are very sensitive to fragrance so when there's like that much fragrance in a product I know it kind of excludes a lot of people versus if it's fragrance free. I've seen a couple people try it and they don't really like the foundation so I don't know if I'd be interested in trying it. I wonder if it has the same coverage as it normally does. I'd be interested to know that because it is like luminous matte. I don't know what luminous matte is. That's like, what's that word? A paradox? Is that what it's called? Am I just so dumb? Yeah, I think that's the word I'm thinking of. A contradictory statement or proposition which when investigated may prove to be well-founded or true. Is that the word I'm looking for? Man, I'm just not smart today. So yeah, I just, I don't know what the finish of a luminous matte would be. Would that just be like a satin? Why would they just call it a satin finish? I don't know. It just seems weird to me. It's probably just a marketing thing to get people's attention. So onto a foundation launch that I I will be criticizing. I kind of want to talk about this for a little bit. Clinique. Clinique came out with their even better clinical serum foundation. First of all, I don't purchase from Clinique because they test on animals. Second of all, even if I wasn't a strictly cruelty free influ influencer, I still wouldn't purchase this foundation because it's 50 shades of white. There are literally two deeper shades. Like, that is ridiculous. Just because you have a big shade range doesn't mean it's a good shade range. It's 2021. Clinique has been around for a long time and they need to get their shit together. Honestly, what is with this foundation range? I would so much rather see a foundation range with, you know, like 10 shades where all of the shades are like equally divided up between fair, light, medium, deep, and super deep skin tones. I don't think that it's really appropriate to have literally 50 shades of white, like 
I could probably color match to five or ten of these shades, honestly. The first four lightest look exactly the same in the swatch. I don't understand. I don't get it. And it looks like on Trend Mood that this foundation was heavily criticized, as it should be. This is a big reason why people don't buy from Clinique anymore, because like, well, I don't know if people don't buy from Clinique anymore. I don't because of the cruelty-free status, but like this shade range is just insulting. And it's launches like these that make me feel like brands have learned nothing about shade ranges. Ever since like the Tarte Shape Tape foundation scandal do you guys remember that where they came up with like eight white shades and one deep shade like it was it was atrocious and they just got reamed for that as they should have i feel like since then brands have been better about dropping an inclusive shade range right from the drop of a foundation none of that we're adding shades later bs like that should not be a thing in my opinion so i feel like since then brands know better even if it is just for pr people won't buy a foundation if it doesn't have an inclusive shade range that's just the reality so brands have been better about it but then you see launches like this and you're like did we make any progress in the last couple of years? I don't know, hard to say. I feel like this is gonna be more of an anti-haul. I don't know if that's just because like I'm broke and I'm kind of on a low buy right now or what. Next thing I wanted to talk about is by Hourglass. It's their new skincare. I didn't even know they had skincare, but apparently it's been a thing for like a little while. I had no idea. So it's the Equilibrium line. Let me see. Oh, Westman Atelier. I've heard good things about them. I think from Samantha Ravendahl she talks about them a lot. I swear I go on Trend Mood's page and I find like 10 things that I haven't seen before. I'm specifically looking for that Hourglass serum so I can check the price. Oh here it is. So the Equilibrium it comes with a day fluid. I don't know if that's like a daytime moisturizer. Oh improves skin's texture and tone with SPF 30. Okay and the Skin Active Serum. So the Day Fluid retails for $105, 105 and then the Skin Active Serum retails for $150 doll hairs. 150. They both defend against visible signs of aging. However, even if I could afford this, let's say I could, I would not purchase them because if I'm going to spend like 250 bucks, I may as well just get Botox. That would definitely be anti-aging and it would probably work better than the serum. I get that Hourglass is like luxury, but I don't know, maybe if I could afford Botox and the serum, then I'd look like Jennifer Lopez or something. But yeah, I just, I get that Hourglass is luxury, but that's just, that's really steep. I'd be interested in looking up the ingredients and seeing if it's actually worth it or, well, I don't even know if it could be worth it, honestly. $150, like that's a lot. That's probably US dollars too. Okay, moving on from things that I cannot afford, I wanna move on to the Nikita Dragon birthday collection. Uh, I don't like the color story. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just, I don't love the color story. I do like pink eyeshadow, but just not these pinks. And the fact that there's like a white and a black, I feel like it's kind of not boring. Well, maybe boring. Like I feel like I wouldn't get a ton of use out of those two shades. Not only that, but the five pan Nikita Dragon eyeshadows, I don't like. I feel like instead of dragon eggs, they look like little fingernails to me. And that really freaks me out. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Not only that, but I'm just not about supporting Nikita Dragon. I think she's very problematic and I'm just not about it. So even if I did like this palette, I would not purchase it. But yeah, does anyone else like get kind of freaked out by the shape of the pants in the eyeshadow or is it just me? That might just be a weird thing that I have going on in my brain. I don't know. Next up is something that I found kind of interesting and innovative. It's by Kaja. And I feel like Kaja always has like very interesting product launches. So the one that I'm talking about are their new lip products. It's a strawberry rose bomb bento. It's like the bento boxes that are like an eyeshadow stack, but it's a lip scrub and lip balm duo. I think that's so innovative and really cool. And that's something that I'd be really interested in trying, especially strawberry rose. Like, doesn't that just sound divine? Oh, I like that you have like this little lip care set that's just all in one instead of like having two separate products that you have to purchase. So yeah, I really like the idea. Even though it's simple, it's really innovative. Sometimes you see Kaja packaging or products and you're like, Mm, I don't know about that. That's interesting, but I don't think it would work in real life. Like it's not very practical, but this one, I feel like it is. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about an eyeshadow palette launched by Dominique Cosmetics. It is the Transitions palette. So as a makeup lover, I think that this launch is very boring. However, as a working makeup artist, I think this palette is genius. It has so many matte shades that would just be perfect 
for crease work and then you can just have like little single pot shadows or a separate all shimmer palette and I just feel like it's super concise and organized. I know for a fact that I would get a lot of use out of these eyeshadows on clients and overall as a makeup artist I just think that that would be a really good thing to have in my kit. You could use a lot of the eyeshadows for different things. You could use them like as bronzers or contours or whatever. And yeah, I think it was a really smart launch. I think that even though it is very basic and not very exciting, I think there is a little bit of a gap in the market for an all matte eyeshadow palette. I know Jeffree Star Cosmetics launched the, uh, I think it's the Orgy palette. First of all, as a makeup artist, I do not want the word Orgy on my eyeshadows while I'm working on people. I just think that in a professional setting that is slightly inappropriate. Additionally, I don't wanna support Jeffree Star, so I feel like this one might be a good alternative, especially because it is quite a bit smaller, but it still has all of the shades that I think I would need. So I think this is a really solid launch from Dominique Cosmetics, and I'm happy to see that it's launched. I'm not gonna purchase it right now, but it's definitely something that I have my eye on. Next up is something that I am personally very interested in because I love their foundation. It's the Beauty Blend under, what's this even called? The Bounce Soft Focus Gemstone Setting Powder. I wonder why it's called Gemstone. It's kind of interesting. I love the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. It's no secret. A lot of my followers have bought it because of me and I just, I really love it. The only thing that's annoying is the packaging, but I think the formula is so good and so universal on a lot of people. I'm wearing it today. This is mine. It's really gross because I use the packaging as a palette as it's intended, but yeah. I really love that foundation. I think it works great. It's really easy to sheer it out and apply it. I use it pretty much on all of my clients and they always talk about how good their skin looks and how long it lasts. I just find that it's a very universal formula that works well on a lot of different people, including myself. So I am really interested in trying these. I currently have the Laura Mercier foundation or setting powder in my kit, but I would definitely be interested in trying the Beauty Blender one. Then I can just have like the entire line in my kit and keep it consistent if it's any good, of course. So yeah, that's one that I am personally excited about. Oh, did you guys see that? I feel like my tripod just broke. That was kind of spooky. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the ColourPop Valentine's Day collection. Mm, kind of iffy on this too. I really think that the blushes are adorable, like love them. However, the eyeshadow palettes, Mm. The five pans already look like things that they've launched in the five pan formula or the five pan format I guess the only one that's really different is the pink one However, I was watching the live swatch video by that girl Shay XO of these palettes and um, The pink one four of the five shades are not eye safe. I feel like that's a lot. That's 80% That's not eye safe. I don't understand I mean, I do understand why they have a couple shades that are not eye safe, but like four out of five that's that's a bit much, I feel like. So yeah, I'd be interested in the blushes and maybe the highlighter. And the handheld mirror is super cute. I'd be interested in that as well, but like not enough to go out and place a ColourPop order, if that makes sense. So yeah, I just feel like this is a pretty forgettable collection and I'll probably be passing on it. Next up, I'm interested to know what you guys think about this. This is the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. First of all, A plus for packaging. That is so beautiful. I would love to see it in person, but in photographs, oh, so gorgeous. The palette inside, um, it's pretty. The only thing is I feel like the naked theme is just run its course. It has. I think Urban Decay should just let it go. It was fantastic while it lasted, but it's time to move on. It's just not something that people are interested in anymore, honestly. And I feel like they're just dragging it out at this point with the naked cherry, the naked honey, and now this naked wild west. I don't, I don't really understand why they can't just come out with like a new concept. What do you guys think? Are you guys still into the whole naked palette thing or are you over it? I just feel like it's kind of like lazy at this point. They just don't want to come up with a new concept and they know that naked sells. So I do like the pops of bluey green though, like little pops of teal. I think that's kind of nice, but it's not very naked. So I do kind of wish that maybe they just called it like the Wild West palette or something like that. Oh, I've been waiting to talk about this one. This one's so weird to me. This is by Jaclyn Cosmetics and it is their Valentine's Day set. How are you going to do a makeup collection? Okay, so I'm criticizing this, but obviously her collection still sold out. Well, I don't know if that's obvious to you, but this collection has already launched and it did sell out in like, 30 seconds. So clearly she's doing something right, but I just don't understand personally. So she launched mystery boxes when she doesn't even have permanent products out. I, I don't, I don't really get that. I feel like, especially with the brand reputation that she has, 
why would you launch mystery boxes? I don't, I don't want to find out a mystery from you. I want consistency. I don't want a surprise. She said that she planned on having more product launches in 2020, but that didn't end up happening because of COVID-19. I think that's a little bit of a weak excuse. Uh, I feel like a lot of brands didn't launch what they wanted to because of COVID-19, but they still had some launches out. I would understand if she had a couple launches and then this surprise mystery box thing, but to have literally nothing come out in the last year because of the pandemic. I don't know if I buy that. I just feel like all of her responses to everything are so fishy and suspicious that I just, I still don't trust it and I don't want a mystery from her. However, this sold out before it even launched. She opened the site like a couple minutes early and apparently no one got their hands on it. She said she had thousands in stock, but if you're a YouTube channel with almost 6 million subscribers, having thousands in stock is, is not enough. She's experienced this so many times where she sells out so freaking fast and she never does anything to make the situation better. So that's just honestly kind of annoying. I'm sure a lot of her fans were not able to get their hands on this product. Product. Even though I don't want a mystery from her, I don't want a surprise, clearly a lot of people still did and still have faith in her and her brand and they were probably really disappointed. So that's all I want to say about that. I wonder how that launch will go when people start receiving their products. I've had something on my lip this entire video and I really hope you couldn't see it that whole time. That's embarrassing, I'm sorry. Okay, normally these videos are really long but I want to keep it a little bit shorter this time and I want to talk about the ColourPop Black collection. So after my last video, I discussed the Animal Crossing collection and I talked about their lack of inclusivity in their products. Um, I'll link the video up here if you want to check it out. Pretty much the day after I posted that video, they posted about the ColourPop Me Black hashtag, which has been going around for quite some time. It's taken them quite a while to acknowledge it. I can't remember the creators that started it. I'll put them down below here so that you can check them out. But they started the ColourPop Me Black hashtag to address the lack of inclusivity on ColourPop social media channels. So so now they have taken that hashtag and are asking black creators to use it so that they can feature more black artists on their pages, which I think is fantastic. And then they launched the ColourPop Black Collection. And I think the whole point of this is to have created products that will be vibrant and show up nicely on darker skin tones. First of all, the packaging is beautiful. I really like the black packaging. I think it's something different. And I think this is a step in the right direction. I really do. I just hope hope that this kind of energy continues and isn't just like a Black History Month kind of thing. I hope they're really taking the feedback that they got and progressing towards change because while this is a good first step, I don't quite buy it yet. I hope this isn't just a collection that they're launching to get people to pipe down and stop talking about it. And then they'll just go back to their normal ways after this collection has launched. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope I'm conveying my thoughts accurately and appropriately, but I do think that this is a step in the right direction. And I do think the collection is beautiful. I hope that they did consult people of color in the making of this collection, because while I think it's beautiful and I do think that it would show up on a variety of skin tones, obviously I don't know best because I don't live with that skin tone. So I hope that they consulted a lot of black creators in the making of this collection to ensure that this is something that makeup artists and makeup enthusiasts of color would actually want to use. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments down below, especially if you are a person of color that loves makeup. I would love to hear your thoughts. And like I said in my Animal Crossing video, I think it's really important that we do have these discussions. So yeah, please sound off in the comments. Let me know if this is something you think is great or or if it's not. And I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Lunar Beauty is launching some lashes. I think that's kind of boring. However, they do look nice, so that's kind of cool. Lashes are never an exciting launch for me because I just, I wear them all the time. So I just stick to like what I know. You know what I mean? I just wear the same ones over and over. KKW Beauty launched another collection, the Matte Mauve Collection and the Matte Honey Collection. And it literally looks like everything she's ever launched. It looks the exact same. It's all matte shades. It's it's really nothing interesting. The promo pictures are beautiful. Uh, however, the makeup itself, mm. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I'll scooch back over here. Please let me know in the comments if there was anything in particular that you have your eye on. I would love to know. I'd love to know your thoughts about new launches. Um, yeah, I love having these chats with you guys. So that is everything for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. If you don't subscribe, that's okay. I just really appreciate you being here. It really helps out my channel just you watching. So thank you. Please leave any video requests you may have in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!